going to use the E3 tool from Zookin in order to put together a cable in a very fast and ho hopefully relatively easy uh, form and fashion. So let's uh, begin here. First and foremost, I'm going to do a file new and I'm going to start a new project. And there we go. We've got our first sheet all set up over here. So what we see is our first page here and I'm going to turn it on. So now we've got it turned on. You can see that the default Zookin template has been brought in. Obviously, if you've got a company template that you want to put in there, you certainly could do that. Now, why do we have to turn this on and off? Well, plain and simple, in larger projects, you would actually have dozens of pages and it just makes it very easy to uh, turn them on and off. You can also organize these uh, in different folders. So if you have one for pneumatics and another one for electrical and another one for mechanical, you can easily set those up here as well. Now that we've got our sheet up over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together an Ethernet cable. So I'm going to have two RJ45 connectors and they are going to be connected together with a CAT6 cable. So I got to get these out of the library. So let's go to the far right side of our screen. You can see we've got our component panel up. And by the way, these are all panels, very similar to what you may have seen in other tools. So we can move them. They're always available for you and you can detach them, and put them back on. Now in the component area here, there are a number of components that they do provide for you within the tool. Obviously it's not the complete collection, so you'll have to add components on as you, uh, as you go along. However, uh, there's quite a few that they do provide. You may notice in any given one of these here that they do use the manufacturer's part number for these. So unless you know what it looks like, uh, or you just know the number offhand, it's going to require you to do a little bit of searching for it. So they do provide a very nice search tool for this and you can see it's been set up already. By default this would not be here on the top where it says description and component name. But if I right click here I can click on component search configuration and I can set up my I can basically set up those things I want to search for. In this case I can either search for a description or I can search for a component name. You'll also notice that there's a number of what they call attributes on the side here. These are not ones that I've created. They're ones that come with the tool by default. So they've done a lot of that uh, legwork for you already. You can certainly add more attributes to it if you uh, so desire. But I can, based off of the attributes that are provided here, I could actually, uh, in, the, in the individual components, I could try to do some searches for information on those attributes. So I just want to make that known because we are going to use this a few times here in the uh, project, uh, this project that I'm going to demonstrate. So the first thing I need to get are some RJ45. So I'm going to do that through the description search here. So I'm going to do a wildcard, which is an asterisk, and I'm going to type in RJ45, and I'm going to end it on an asterisk or a wildcard. And you can see those things that were brought up. In this tool, we don't just have a symbol. There are a number of different types of symbols that we have available to us. So again, you've got to keep in mind we're dealing with cabling, we're dealing with connectors, we're dealing with panels, we're dealing with system level design here. So it goes above and beyond just having, let's say, a PCB symbol, for example. And just to demonstrate that, let me just take this one part here and I'll right click on it and I'll just say, hey, let's start a new component. Okay, so let's give it a minute here and I'm going to just drop this down because I put it behind it. We can see the component wizard came, came up and I'm not going to go through the process of creating a new component here. We'll save that for another video. The point I'm trying to make here is look at all the different types of symbols that you have available for you in this tool. So again, we're dealing with the system level tool. There's a number of different types of symbols that are available to you depending on what you're trying to do. And that makes it very powerful because you can take your pneumatics, you can, your schemat, uh, pardon me, your pneumatics, your mechanical, your electrical, your hydraulic, and you can put them all together in one project. And the past these would have been done in different projects, and that's what made it so difficult to get these things together in a large scale design. With this tool, you can get it all together. It's grand unification. So let me cancel out of here and let's bring back my E3 tool. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to take a module here. I'm going to take this uh, this RJ45 device pin and you can see from the preview window down below in the right side this looks like an RJ45 type of connector we would expect on an Ethernet and if I want here I can expand this out to take a look I see the eight pins here and there's also another representation as well I'm going to right click on this to show you some component properties in this part here this is an actual Molex part and here's its part number they call it an article number here and in addition to that, they do other use other terms, so you just got to get a little more used to these things. For example, this is not a library, it's a database. Uh, the class and the main class are really just subdirectories that you see over here. 
and so on and so forth. The, you'll also notice that they say database class Chinese or Dutch, English, French. This is an international tool. So if you're working across international borders with people using different languages, you can set this up so that if they switch over the language, to, to example, to Chinese or to Italian, it, uh, as long as that information was filled in, they should be able to see it. So it's a really nice way of being able to quickly translate the information if there's any type of verbiage there from one language to the next. All right, let me just uh, cancel out here. One other thing I'll mention here is that they treat components and symbols in a very special way, which is different from most of us working in the PCB side of things. In this tool here, you see at the bottom right corner, components and you see symbols. Symbols are just representations, like they're graphic along with some attributes. So if you example, if you take it on the PCB side of thing, imagine you have a resistor, you draw out a resistor and you add things like value and you add things like tolerance and you add things like wattage to it. That's just a generic representation of a resistor. Whereas in the component, you can point to that resistor symbol and say, look, you have most of the stuff I need. However, in addition to that, my component is gonna represent the manufacturer's name and the manufacturer's part number. So it's a really great use of, or reuse of your symbols in your components. And that's what you're seeing here. All right, so I'm gonna place my RJ45 pin device. I have a number of options. So when I right click on it, you can see that I can place as single pins, I can place as a symbol. Symbol just basically means one pin that represents the eight pins. Kind of boring, but if you're doing a large scale design, more often than not, that's more than adequate in order to connect one system to another. Uh, and then we can also place it as a graphic. But for what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna place them as single pins. So when I click on it, and you can look on the middle of my screen, you can see that in the uh, editor window, I now have those eight pins. Now, like every other tool out there, there are zoom features. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit my Z key and where my top left corner of my cursor is, that's gonna be the start of the zoom. So I'm gonna hit my Z key and I'm gonna pull my cursor down. So it's nice, I didn't have to stop for example, my placement of the component, it allowed me to do the zoom, and once I'm done with the zoom, it'll allow me to resume with the placement. So I didn't have to bail out of the, the last command. I click down, and now I can see things a little easier. And I'm gonna place this down. I'm gonna place one more of these down. I'm gonna right click here again. I'm gonna place single pins, and you'll notice that, by the way, we have X1 here, and once I do my rotation, you'll see X2. So in a similar fashion, other tools, there's different ways to mirror things, different things to do for rotation. I'm gonna hit the Y key in this case to tell it to basically flip it along the Y axis. And then we're gonna bring it here just enough so we can drop it in. So now we have X1 and we now have X2. So we have our two RJ45 components together. So we're good to go. Now, what if I did want that representation over here? Well, if I go back here into my component database and I place something else down here, well, then I'm gonna get an X3 and I don't wanna do that. So in this tool, I can have the same component with different symbolic representations. And in order for me to take advantage of that, I gotta to go to the right side here under a tab called devices. So let's bring up the device tab here. You'll notice on the very top left corner, we have this X which represents the uh, designators here, X1, X2. So if I had a bunch of other designators, you'd see these folders with A or, or C or W, depending on what components I was using. And if I had a large design, for example, let's say I had like 40 of these, uh, these connectors in there, different types of them in here, I would see a whole list of 40 all under the X because that would be its designator. But for now, we see only these two here. We have X1 and we have X2, and we can expand those out just a little bit further just for everybody to take a look at. So what I want here, in addition to my symbolic representation, I want my physical representation as well for X1. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna click on X, I'm gonna right click on it here, and I'm gonna say, hey, place the master symbol. So I place that down here, and voila. And if I push this over here to the, uh, scroll it over here to the left, you'll notice this also says X1, which is good, that means that I'm not creating a new part here. This X1 representation is associated with this X1 representation here on these pins. So we're gonna do the same thing for X2. I'm gonna right click, place master symbol. Again, I'm gonna hit the Y key to flip it around. I'm gonna bring it down there and now I've got it. The next thing I'm gonna do here is I've gotta get some uh, connections going between X1 and X2. So initially when we do this, we're just trying to tell the system how we're gonna net list up. And we'll worry about the physical cable about it here in just a moment. So for now, I can do it one of two ways. In the top right corner, they have a number of little icons I can click on. 
and I can click on insert connection and do this one at a time but I'm going to cheat here for the sake of time and I'm going to click on the button that says auto connect horizontal so I will click on that I will sweep over this and now all eight of my lines are connected up now I gotta get a cable associated to this as well so let's go back over to the component side on the right side of my screen I am going to do a reset search so that this has all been uh, cleared out here so now I'm back to my original library my default library and now I'm going to actually use a component name for this and this is a component I actually made the other day so again keep in mind that even though Zookin is providing you a number of these components there's well over 100 million components out there and probably even more so if you look above and beyond when you talk about system level stuff as well obviously no library is going to have it all you're going to have to make some parts and in this case I need to make this cat6 wire so I did start make I did make it and in fact as I type it in here you can see it filled in the rest that is the part I'm looking for I'm gonna hit enter and it brings it up and it shows me where it is at so let's expand this out and you're gonna see some things here you're gonna see that it's got a shield and it's got some twisted pairs to it all right so that's what I created here. So I created the eight wires, but I also was following the CAT6 standard, which does have some twisted pairs to it. Now I need to get this onto this wire here so that these wires have a meaning as uh, to its, or its relationship to a cable. So let's right click here and we're gonna do, there's a couple of options, but what I'm going to click on is connect cables continuously. So I'm gonna select this here, I'm gonna sweep down and boom, I've got them. Could I put each individual on there? There was a feature, a function to do that obviously to save time and to uh, take advantage of the tools efficiencies that's what we're going to do here all right now that I've done this you'll notice that the W has shown up in the devices okay and there they are and let's bring these up I'm going to expand out the shield I'm also going to expand out the twisted pair as well so you may have noticed that there's a coloration difference here so the ones that have been placed are those that are in blue and those things that have not been placed yet are in uh, yellow and this is really important because if you are doing a large scale design and you've got things scattered all over different pages, maybe one thing represents a physical and maybe you have a completely different page that represents the, uh, the symbolic here. This is just an indication to you to tell you that, hey, you haven't placed these things down yet, so find a place for them. And in other cases, if we had multiple pages, you would see which page these were associated with. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, put down the twisted pairs and the shields. So let's get these things kind of moved up so that we can do that. So like anything else and most of the editor tools that you have, you just need to uh, sweep over it and select or click and drag it and it'll move. So one and two are twisted pairs here. So I'm going to click on the TW1 and I'm going to drop that in. And if I want to make this prettier, there's ways of clicking on the little diamond here to, uh, to restretch it. Now, interestingly enough, in Cat6, Cat6 cable, I guess any cable for that matter, it's the three and the six lines that are actually twisted together. So I'm going to grab those and move them. So put those together. And now we're going to take the second one and place it in there. Then we're going to take four and five. We'll move these over here. And we'll put this twisted pair in there. And notice how they're changing blue after I place them down here. So the only one that's missing is the twisted pair number four. We'll put that down here as well. And obviously, if we had a little more time, we'd make this look a little cleaner. But just, just for the sake of uh, moving this along, you can see that it's easy enough to do. And you can obviously control the graphics as necessary by moving and uh, resizing them. The last thing I'm going to put down is a shield. So this one I did create. does I created it with a shield and with, with that intention in mind. So I'm going to place down a shield here. And once I've got that, I'm going to uh, stretch it out. You can grab this over here sometimes I got to zoom in for it yeah let me zoom it in so we can see a little better I'm gonna hit my Z key and zoom it in and once my icon here changes to an up down arrow then I know I can drag it and there we go all right so now I've got my symbolic representation all set to go as for my physical representation I can certainly draw a cable between these two just to show that they're connected so we'll start this one over here we'll double click it here and boom we're done and we can certainly change the thickness of these lines if we wanted to uh, we can control all those things over here we can even give it different uh, looks as well so if you wanted to make it look like this for example uh, you certainly could do that so they have a number of uh, features and options to it so we have done that at this point in time I am going to hit the letter O so we can zoom out and see what we got so on the top here we have our symbolic representation in the middle here we have our physical representation 
We can also have a table representation as well. So I'm going to zoom in. Again, I hit my Z key and we'll stretch this box here and we'll place it down here as well. So going back to our devices here, again, we don't want to create something new here. We want to create another representation. I'm going to right click on X1 and I'm going to go over here to place de new device view because these are different views that we have. But what I'm going to do is I want to click create a certain table here. So I'm going to click on table wire three. And this means that this is what the formats are going to look like for each one of my pins. When I place it, there it is for all eight pins. I'm going to drop it down here and I got to do the same thing for X2. So again, I'm going to go into place a new device view and I'm again going to pick wire three, place it down. I do have to hit the Y key to rotate it and then we'll drop it down. Notice that because of the information that we have already up here, it already knows what the general connectivity is between these. And if I want to make it official, again, I'll use my little, my uh, quick and easy, I won't even call it a cheat, it's really a feature, uh, auto connect horizontal, I will turn that on, I'll sweep over this, and now they are all connected together. Okay, So that just gives you an idea of how quickly I was able to put this together. I have my physical, I have my symbolic, and I also have my table. The last thing I'll show you is that when you do put these things down, they can be placed into a bill of materials. So as an add-on under the E3 documents, I'm going to say create bombs. So there are scripts that you can write for this. Keep in mind with a tool of this nature and companies being so large and having their own processes, a lot of times that you will have to write a script. It has a very robust scripting tool here. Uh, it's amazing how well documented it is and there's a lot of support for that as well. And you can see that through this script, uh, we were able to get the bill of materials here. So I am going to hit the Z key one more time so that you can see this. And then you can see that here's our positions and here are the number that we need for each one of these. So we have a quantity of one for the cable and we have two for the uh, RJ45 from Molex. So hopefully that gives you a very quick overview of the E3 tool. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact us here at 9.connects and you have a wonderful day.